lesson 2-4, solving systems of equations algebraically. In a previous lesson, we looked at solving systems by graphing. Here, we're looking at two other ways of solving them, both algebraically. We're going to look at substitution and elimination today. So when you're solving systems of equations in two variables by substitution, all you're doing is substituting one equation in for the same variable in the other equation. In order to do that, we're going to have to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. So step one, solve at least one equation for one of the variables, whether it's x or y. Then step two, you're going to substitute the resulting expression from step one into the other equation to replace that variable. Then you're going to solve the equation. Step three, you're going to substitute the value from step two into either equation and solve for the other variable. And then you're going to write your solution as an ordered pair. Or you could just write it as x equaling y equaling. So an example, 8x minus 3y equals negative 1, and x plus 2y equals negative 12. I need to solve one of these equations for a variable. Since I already have x, which is 1x, I can solve for x one by subtracting 2y on both sides. When I do that, I end up with x equaling negative 12 minus 2y. Now this is what x equals, and I'm going to substitute that in for this x up here. So when I do that, I now have 8 times a negative 12 minus 2y minus 3y equals negative 1. So I'm solving for x, or solving for y first. So I'm going to distribute the 8, and that's just going to give me a negative 96 minus 16y minus 3y equaling negative 1. If I combine like terms, I'm going to need to get this 96 to the other side by adding 96. I now have a negative 19y equaling 95. To get y by itself, I'm going to divide by negative 19. And 95 divided by negative 19 gives me x or y equaling a negative 5. Now I'm going to use negative 5 and I'm going to put that in for y because that's going to help me find my x. So I'm going to substitute negative 5 in for y. Now I could put it in either of the equations. I'm just putting it into this bottom one just because I already have x by itself. So now I have x equaling a negative 12 plus 10. That's going to give me an answer of x equaling a negative 2. Or you can write it as an ordered pair, which would be negative 2 comma negative 5. Next example, use substitution to solve this system of equations. Here I'm going to solve for y in the top case. So now I have x on x on both sides. And now I have y equals a negative 3 plus 5x. This is what y equals, so I'm going to substitute that in for y down here. So I have 3x minus 8 times negative 3 plus 5x equaling 24. I'm going to distribute negative 8 to get rid of my parentheses, so I have 3x plus 24 minus 40x equaling 24. 3x minus 40x is a negative 37x. I'm going to subtract 24. This is going to give me 0. Divide by negative 37. I would have x equaling 0. And if x is 0, I now have y equaling negative 3 plus 5 times 0, which would be y equals a negative 3. Next example, here you want to solve for one of the variables. This bottom one, I'm going to switch my negative 11 and negative 11 around. So this would be y equals 3x plus 11. 
This is what y equals, so I'm going to substitute that in for this y here. So I now have 6x plus 5 times 3x plus 11 equals a negative 8. I'm going to distribute the 5, so I have 6x plus 15x plus 55 equals a negative 8. Subtract 55 on both sides and then add like terms. I now have 21x equaling negative 63. Divide by 21, x would equal a negative 3. Now if I plug in negative 3 here, I would have y equals negative 9 plus 11. y would equal a positive 2. Example 2, substitute when there is not exactly one solution. So here we were told what y is. So I'm going to substitute that in for this y. And I'm going to simplify it. So I have negative 5x plus 2.5 times 2x minus 11 equaling negative 15. Distribute. So now I have negative 5x plus 2.5 times 2 will give me 5. So I have 5x and then minus 2.5 times 11 gives us 27.5 equals a negative 15. If I were to simplify this side, I would have negative 5x plus 5x is 0. So I'm left with negative 27.5 equaling a negative 15. Now 20, negative 27.5 can never equal negative 15. So this one, there would be no real solution here. Next, do substitution to solve this system. Here I have my y equaling. I'm going to substitute that in for this y. So I have negative x plus 3 times 1 third x plus 4 thirds. This has to equal 4. If I distribute, I now have negative x plus x plus 4 equals 4. These cancel each other off, and I'm left with 4 equaling 4. Since 4 does equal 4, this would be many solutions. Which just means I can put anything in for x and y, it will still be true. Next example three, a word problem. It says, Ms. Washington is preparing a hydrochloric acid solution. She will need 300 milliliters of a 5% hydrochloric acid solution for her class to use during the lab. If she has a 2.5% hydrochloric acid solution and a 7% hydrochloric acid solution, how much of each solution should she use in order to make the solution stable? So I need two, two uh, equations. One I'm going to use for uh, milliliters, and the other one's going to be used as a percent. So I'm going to use x and y as well. So I know x plus y has to give me a total of 300 milliliters. But I also know that um, the percentages, I'm going to use the percentages as decimals. So I know 3.5% uh, is 0.035x plus 0.07y. has to equal a total of 5%, which is 0.05. And this is 5% of uh, 300 milliliters. So I'm going to have to multiply this by 300 milliliters. So now if I were to simplify this, instead of 0 0.05 times 2, 0 0.05 times 300, and we get 15.
Now here, I'm just going to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract x on both sides. So this is what y is. I'm going to substitute that in for this y right here. So I have 0.035x plus 0 0.07 times 300 minus x equaling 15. And I just distribute. I'll put that up here. So I have 0 0.035x, 0 0.037 times 300 is 21, plus 21 minus 0.07x equaling 15. Combine like terms, I'm going to subtract 21. So I have 0 0.035 minus 0. 0.07x, so that's a negative 0.035x equaling a negative 6. Divide by negative 0.035. That gives us an answer roughly 171.5. We'll do it to the nearest hundredth, so about 171.43. Then I'm going to put that into my one of my original equations. So if I put 171.43 here, 300 minus 171.43 gives us roughly 128.57. Video game awards points to players based on the number of enemies encountered that are conquered. Defeating an enemy earns a player five points, and taking a castle earns a thousand points. If a player has 10,800 points, then knows that 160 times as many enemies as castles have been conquered, determine the number of enemies and castles that the player has conquered. So I'm going to use B for enemies and C for castles. I know that enemy plus castle equals a total equal a total of uh, we're doing points, so let me give a little more space. So for each cast for each enemy it's five points. For each castle is uh, 1,000 points. Total of 10,800 points. The other equation would be if a player has 10,800 points and knows that 160 times as many enemies as castles have been conquered, that means if I take the enemies and multiply that by a that would be the same as saying 160 times C. I can now do substitution. So if this is what E is, substitute that in here. And I have 5 times 160 C plus 1000 C equals 10,800. This will give us 800 C plus 1000 C equals 10,800. We got 1800 C equals 10,800, divide by 1,800. The number of castles would be 6. And if the number of uh, castles is 6, find the number of enemies, I just take 160 times 6, and 160 times 6 would give us 960. So our solution would be six castles, 960 enemies. Our last half is looking at another form, another way of solving these, which would be elimination. So you're going to line them up, the equations lining up, them up, look for matching coefficients, add and subtract to eliminate a variable when you only have one variable left. And then you're still going to have to use substitution, but just the way you're uh, solving the first part that's a little bit different. So our steps, multiply one or both of the equations by a number to result in two equations that contain opposite or equal terms. 
Sometimes you don't have to multiply because they already have opposite terms, but if you if they're not opposite terms, then you do need to multiply. Step two, add or subtract the equations and eliminate one variable and then solve the equation. Step three, substitute the value from step two into either equation and solve for the other variable. Write the solution as an ordered pair or you can write it as x equals y equals. So an example here, says you use elimination to solve. I look at my coefficients. I have negative two, negative nine, negative four, negative nine. It would be easier for me to eliminate the y if I multiply this top equation by negative one. This will give us two x plus nine y equaling 25. Because then if I add straight down, I get negative two x. The y is eliminates and I'm left with two. Divide by negative two, x would equal a negative one. And if x is negative one, I need to substitute it into one of the two equations. It doesn't matter which one, I'm just gonna choose the top one. So negative two times negative one minus nine y equals a negative 25. So now I have two minus nine y equals negative 25. I'm gonna subtract two and I get negative nine y equals negative 27. Divide by negative nine, y would equal a positive three. So my answer would be x equals negative one, y equals negative three. Next, check my y variable for my x variable. The coefficients, the y's are very similar, they're the same. One has to be positive, one has to be negative. I'm gonna multiply this top one by negative one. That gives me a negative eight x minus two y equals a negative 30. Add straight down and I get negative x equaling a negative six. Divide by negative one, x would equal six. Substitute that in for x in one of the variable uh, equations on the bottom one this time. Seven times six plus two y equals 24. 42 plus two y equals 24. Subtract 42. Now I have 2y equals 24 minus 42 is negative 18. Divide by 2, our y would equal negative 9. Next, use elimination here. I can see that my y's have opposite signs. So I'm going to use, I'm going to eliminate my y's here, but I need to have them to have the same coefficient with opposite signs. So the least common multiple of five and four is 20. If I multiply this top one by four, and this bottom one by five, I can now eliminate my y's. Distribute, this will give us eight x plus 20 y equals four. And this one will give us 15 x minus 20 y equals negative 50. Now I can add straight down and this gives me 23x equaling a negative 46. Divide by 23, x would equal a negative two. Solve for my y, I'm just gonna substitute the number, the number two in for x for either of the equations. I'm gonna use the top one, negative two, or, 2 times negative 2 plus 5y equals 1. Negative 4 plus 5y equals 1. I'm going to add, add 4 to both sides. I have 5y equaling 5. Divide by 5. My y would equal 1. Next, eliminate these. So I have my y's have opposite signs. I'm gonna eliminate those. I'm gonna multiply these. Multiply this by nine and this by five. Now, if you want to eliminate the x's, you can. You can just find the least common multiple of, of six and five, and then you just have to make sure one of them is negative and the other one's positive. I usually choose the one that already has opposite signs. 
if I distribute, this gives me 54x plus 45y. And negative 32 times 9 gives us negative 288. Distribute the 5 here to get neg uh, 25x minus 45y equaling 46 times 5 gives us 130. Add straight down and we get 79x equaling negative 288 plus 130 gives us negative 158. Divide by 79. X would equal negative 2. To find our Y, substitute negative 2 in for one of the equations. I'll just do the bottom one. 5 times negative 2 minus 9Y equals 26. This is negative 10 minus 9Y equals 26. Add 10. Again, negative 9y equaling 36. Divide by negative 9. Y would equal a negative 4. Next, solve this one by elimination. So I check my x's and y's. Everything's positive. Now I'm going to multiply this bottom one by a negative 3. And the reason why I'm going to do negative 3 is because I know negative 3 times 6x will give me negative 18x, and I can limit it by x. So I'm going to first write this one over here, 18x plus 21y equals 14. Negative 3, that gives me a negative 18x minus 21y, negative 6. The x's eliminate, the y's eliminate, so I have 0 equaling uh, negative, or not negative, uh, positive 8. 0 never equals 8, so that means this would be no solution. And our last example here. Use elimination to solve the system here. Here I see a positive and a negative x and a positive and a negative 4. This one, I'm going to still eliminate the x and I multiply this top. This bottom one by 3. So now I got 3x minus 12y equals 9. Distribute, negative, uh, distribute 3 would give us negative 3x plus 12y minus 9. This will give us 0 equaling 0. Since both sides are equal to each other, this would be many solutions, which just means the lines are identical. The previous one, the lines were parallel because the slopes would be equal. That's why they're identical. That's our lesson on solving systems of equations algebraically.